Right, um, in the studio, it's Monday morning and I am working on this painting here, which you're quite far away, but I'm just about to mix up some earthy tones that I'm using in here. So I thought I'd show you that. So actually my palette, um, titanium white, cadmium yellow pale, cadmium orange, red matter, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, missing out the phthalo blue because don't really need phthalo blue for this. So anyway, earthy tones, what are they with this palette? Well, they are, let's start with light brown. You just make it really simple. Light brown would be a good place to start, but what I do is I actually have a little piece of paper, uh, well, this is what I teach, and you go to, you compare that to your painting. By the way, this one up here is, that one there is my little sketch I've done, my little oil sketch, little oil study before I've done the larger painting. And to be honest, some of the colors in here are actually I'm um, preferring. So I'm transferring these ones onto here. Um, there's my reference on the TV screen. It's a great reference. So also using that, um, but yeah, working on this one here. It's been a bit of a, actually been a nightmare to be honest. I didn't realize how purple it had to be because um, anyway, it needs to be quite purple and I'm getting there. But anyway, start with light brown. Add some orange. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of variations. Okay. So blue and red makes purple. Like I said, in this landscape, I was, I underestimated the purple. So if I now add some purple to that, orange, and I think if you go to the opposite side of the color wheel, you get purple. Well, yellowy purple. A little orange in there. So you might look at that, that might look like gray to you, but that's a purpley orange. And I always make this gradient from my darks to my lightest colors. And then I might go and make a second gradient. Start with the light brown, burnt umber and white. What the hang, we'll add some orange in there. This time, burnt umber and you can see that, yep. My burnt umber and my ultramarine blue go together to make my black. Don't have black on the palette, but this is how I make black. So with a little bit, it's got a little bit of white in there, that makes my gray. So I want to make a gray, maybe leaning towards blue. This one could be my cool dark, that would be my warm dark, this could be my cool dark. And down here, and this is like a warm orange. So I'm gonna put some warm orange in there, but I'm also gonna put some red in there, just cause what the hang. So I'm always using a palette knife at this stage. So I use a palette knife to start putting, to mix my paint and I'm more chop it. I don't smear it like this. I more chop my paint. Anyway, I can make more videos. There's a reason for that. I'll make that on another video. But there we go. What I'm saying is I use the palette knife, but then once I start painting, I tend to often start mixing a little bit, just adjusting it with the brush. But essentially that's how I might work here. I might um, make two different gradients from dark to light. Uh, one's a lot warmer, one's a bit cooler with some warmth and then some red, some different colors. And then I'll start applying them to this painting here. At this stage of this painting, these um, subsequent layers that are coming over top, this is gonna be wet over that painting's already dry. I'm using a lot of these uh, hog head long flats, I think they're called, yeah. That is Rosemary Co Ultimate Long Flat. That one there is just a 
bristle synthetic as this is a bristle synthetic too which I'm actually quite liking but yeah basically bristle brushes br bristle brushes to put the paint on so I'll show you me do that and show you how I do that now cheapers so a little bit of that and starting to starting to build up the light colors in this painting not saying that I've finished the darks completely, I like I still go back in, but and the bristle sort of scratches around and creates sort of like interesting brush marks and starts to represent what I'm trying to represent, which is like I suppose it's tussock tussock tops in the distance lighting up I've been over this painting like a few times now this is you know I won't lie to you I'm thinking I'm going to make a video out of this painting and I still will but I've got like freaking like I don't know maybe like six hours of video maybe more more than six hours I think already so you see me do this now, now I'm adjusting. Like I said, I adjusted. I adjusted my colors. I adjust as I go. So I make up those initial colors as a base. And then as I go along, I just dip in, maybe a little bit more orange, just comparing. It's a tedious process, especially when you like go over and over again. But the result is generally, hopefully, worth it. You know, it's going to be a real dark. Well, it's not a dark, dark, moody painting because once the light comes in, it'll start to brighten things up a bit. Um, you notice I go a long way with just a little bit of paint um, now because I've, I've really got a good coverage of paint on there already. Um, so it's. I'm building up like subtle layers now. I hope this works. If you're out there and you um, have any questions or would like me to see me do something, everybody wants to know about the mist. And um, I think I've already got a video with mist on, but I'll do some more mist. Um, popular subject. A lot of mist here in New Zealand. The land of the long white cloud, they call it. There's mist everywhere. Yeah, so that's a little bit of an insight into how I start to build up this and build up these lights. Um, now, let me just show you. Um, not to say, I'll just make a little bit of a dark here. Make it purple, learn that lesson, it's got to be purple. So that's a very purpley dark. Um, I'll just show you how I can actually just go, oh, change that colour. Can go back in, still go back in with some darks and push back the other way. The lights, then the darks, then the darks, then the lights again, <laughs> and just when do you stop? But anyway, you just keep on going until you. Maybe I could time lapse this a little bit. Sometimes I paint and uh, I move my hand a lot and move the brush a lot, and no paint really goes on. So when I look back at the video, I'm like, oh, jeepers, that looks like I'm doing nothing. So. I don't know. I suppose if um, if that's the case, you won't see it. But right, leave me to it. I'll leave you to your day. You go and do some painting, maybe, and uh, I'll uh, carry on doing what I'm doing.